There's a big literature in, in economics about consumer search behavior. And you have basically two streams. One uh, assumes that consumers are searching in a sequential way, so which means that consumers determine after each search uh, whether to continue searching or not. Uh, and then there's this uh, uh, non-sequential search strategy way of modeling, which assumes that consumers determine before they start searching uh, which uh, retailers to visit. So what we wanted to do in this paper uh, is to, s to see using actual um, browsing behavior, actual shopping behavior of, of consumers, whether to, s uh, to see whether consumers are using one way of shopping versus the other way, right? And there's be as, uh, uh, right now there's not very much information about what consumers are actually doing. There's some information about uh, from experiments, uh, which, uh, I mean, that's, the results are kind of mixed. But there's no information on how consumers are really shopping, what kind of strategies they're using from uh, real-world data. Nowadays, now we can actually observe what people did before a transaction. So economic models are all an oversimplification of reality. And the simpler the model, the less things, interesting things you can say about. So now that we can actually observe in the, uh, individual behavior for a transaction, now we can actually estimate what are the market frictions uh, in this market, for example, we can actually go and estimate the search cost that consumers face when buying a product. This, uh, it may seem like a, uh, like a minor thing, you know, you, it's a search cost, you just go into the grocery store, I face the cost of driving there, and the time also to buy and buy my groceries, but this influences how firms set their prices. The higher the search cost, the higher firms can set the prices uh, in the market. So search costs are an important part of demand. Our key findings were that consumers really s don't search that much. So the, the online book market is dominated by just a few big retailers. Uh, Amazon is, of course, the biggest, uh, followed by Barnes & Noble. And together, they have about 70-80% um, of the market. So it turns out that most consumers just go to, to one of the two. Um, and if they're searching more than once, then it's usually uh, Amazon is usually part of the, of the choice set. So that's one thing, key finding we found, that consumers are not searching a lot. Um, the other thing is that loyalty is very important. So it really matters where you have shopped before. So, if, um, so, there, there, so there tends to be, uh, so if you visited uh, or if you shopped at Amazon before, then it's, it's more likely that you will keep shopping there uh, next time. Um, and at the same time, um, we also find that the price differences between Amazon and Barnes & Noble are relatively small. The data we obtained from uh, Comscore, which is a, it's a, it's a company that collects uh, uh, basically browsing data from a large panel of individuals. So these individuals all agree to, to have Com Comscore mon monitoring their, uh, their internet browsing behavior. So, so that's the, the main data set we're using. Um, for this paper, we're using uh, data from 2002 and 2004. Um, so for each uh, individual in the panel, we observe all the domain domains they have visited in, 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 in the sampling period. So this is, of course, a, a huge amount of information. So the, the, the key thing or, is to kind of uh, get the information from, from the browsing behavior that is, interested, that is interesting um, uh, for uh, studying search behavior. Right? And the nice thing about this uh, Comscore uh, data set is that we also have information about uh, transactions. So we know for each panel, in, uh, for each individual in the panel, which, which products they bought from online retailers. One of the challenges of this data, imagine now you have all the websites people visited. These are a lot of websites. You know? So the size of the data set is pretty large. So the first thing that we did is focuses, focusing on visited, visits to bookstores. <coughs> as, a, as you might think, oh, well, there's 200 bookstores out there. Well, there's really not. People don't visit, don't visit all the bookstores that are available out there. People visit a few bookstores. And actually, transactions are only 15 bookstores on our data set. So we focus on the visits to these bookstores. Uh, and then we can say, well, what about transactions? Transactions uh, present a challenge in itself because now we can, we have to match the same book across retailers. So now we need to match if you bought Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, 
in Amazon, you need to see and compare other transactions to see if the consumer actually bought the same book at other retailers. So one of the challenges is that the retailers use different methodologies to, to describe a book in their, in their checkout, in the checkout page. So the, you need to be able to identify the product across retailers. Uh, the second challenge that we have is that since people don't, uh, first they don't buy a lot of books, is not, uh, uh, so we don't have a lot of transactions of a lot of books. Uh, this is a long tail market. So everybody bought the Da Vinci Code in 2004, and we have about 50 transactions of the Da Vinci Code. That will tell you one of the biggest challenges of this, of this project. Even though there is more than 20,000 transa book transactions out there, when you look at the book level, there are not that many transactions per book. The techniques we used were really based on the specific question we we're looking at. So the, the first question we looked at was whether consumers are actually recalling or not. And that's pretty straightforward to, to, to see directly from the data. It's just a matter of, of looking at the right uh, descriptive statistics. Uh, however, the second question we looked at whether consumers uh, uh, use uh, price information to determine whether to continue searching or not. That, that's a more difficult question to answer by just looking at the descriptives. So for that we used uh, uh, a simple logic model uh, whether we looked at the decision to continue searching or not whether that is a function of uh, the price differences across uh, the, the retailers in our data. And then in the third part of the paper we uh, we actually wanted to estimate uh, how se price sensitive consumers are uh, using uh, either the sequential or the fixed sample size search model. Well, it turned out that the fixed sample size search model gave a better fit uh, for the, the online browsing data we were using. So, so in that part of the paper, we, we kind of developed uh, a model of a demand model of, of, um, of consumer uh, using, uh, taking into account that consumers were searching according to the fixed sample size search rule. Uh, and to estimate uh, that model, um, we had to apply uh, maximum likelihood uh, techniques.